Do all largemouth bass behave the same? Well, this, this is an interesting one because we've all been out to a lake and we're like, what do they do? Text each other? They send out an email to say we're not biting today? Well, the problem with that is conditional behavior is contagious. I don't know what that is. It could be uh, some sort of signal went off in the water and the bass heard it and they're like, nope, we're not doing that today. Now, one thing I want to make real clear here is there's two different types of largemouth bass in the majority of the country. Texas has got some F strains and they got some other programs they're working on. I don't know what the heck that was behind me. It sounded like an animal was running behind me. But most of the part, it's northern strain largemouth, okay, which tends to not get as big. This is uh, a lot of the northern states, northern strain largemouth. Uh, they live longer, but typically don't get as big. They have a deeper color. Uh, the jaw doesn't typically go super far back past the eye. The Florida strain has a little bit bigger mouth on average. Sometimes the northern strain can have the same size mouth. One of the other clues is the dorsal fin of the northern strain kind of comes up straight over the top of his pectoral fin on the side right there versus a Florida. Sometimes the dorsal fin's a little farther back, but a lot of the times it's really hard to identify them just from the looks of things. Now, behavioral wise, there's a difference. So, oh, like I said, the northern strain lives longer, doesn't get as big. Florida strain gets bigger, but doesn't live as long. And this is why they hybridized them and, uh, crossed them and I believe they're working on that. There's another one, uh, I forget what the term is. You guys throw it in the comments right here. But these two behave differently. The Northern strain tends to be a lot more nomadic. They like to roam around a little more often than a Florida strain does. Florida strains typically like steady conditions. Um, they're a lot more temperamental to post-frontal weather, to pre-frontal weather, whereas a northern strain typically is not as uh, shy around conditions. They are affected by it and they can behave differently. So it is kind of good to know uh, where you are. Does it have Floridas? Does it have Northerns? Um, right here, I live in the California Delta, and the more you go towards the brackish water, the more northerns you have, and the more you go inland, the more Floridas you have. Uh, it doesn't eliminate northerns being further inland, but it definitely eliminates Floridas being farther towards the brackish water. So behavioral differences. A lot of the guys on lakes that I know, for example, I think it was, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It was a final day out here, and I'm just gonna give you this scenario, okay? Florida strain, it was a post-frontal day and it was gonna be slick calm. Uh, so one of the guys in the old uh, Delta Bassmasters tournament, he ran out towards brackish water in an area where there was a lot of northern strain largemouth because he knew they would be much less temperamental. And um, he ended up weighing like 18 or 19 pounds where low 20s was good on all the other days that were pre-frontal, but he knew post-frontal they would be less temperamental. And he went out there and targeted those and ended up winning the tournament. Um, brilliant, brilliant thinking, very scientific way of approaching a tournament. But do all largemouth bass behave the same? If they are in the same area, typically they will. The overall percentage will. There's always one or two dumb ones. Now, let me ask you this. How many times have you caught a bass that was blind in one eye? Raise your hand. I know everyone watching this right now or listening to this has caught a bass that was blind in one eye. Does he behave the same as one with two eyes? No. Depth perception's off. His, one of his abilities to hunt has been lessened. So he has to fully commit and be less analytical on what he chooses to attack. So therefore a bass with one eye is e easier to catch on average. Well, here's the same thing. Less visibility in the water is also eliminating their option to visually hunt, correct? Yes. That's why oftentimes it's easier to catch them on reaction baits in dirtier water. This is why a lot of people ask on the West Coast in California, how come you guys finesse fish so much? Well, we have really clean water. Uh, I go back east. I've been to Table Rock. Guys think it's clear. We have lakes, uh, half of our lakes out here, you could typically see 15 to 30 foot deep 
on a regular basis, which is like super clear compared to anywhere else in the country. So we have to go small. We have to go natural translucent baits uh, to get them to trigger. So do they behave the same? If they're in the same area and they're all healthy, the majority is going to behave the same. This is where you need options. Narrows where the wind's blowing harder to change the conditions. This is where you need to search out different conditions. You run into this time where it's like, hey, they sent out the email, everybody's done biting. This is where you need to reach into your back pocket. And if you haven't watched my other video about covering water, this is why it's so dang important. You need to go to the spot, the windward side of the lake where the most wind is blowing or do just the opposite, go to the opposite side where there is no wind blowing. You need to look for the most extreme conditional change that you can find at that time, whether that's going another 10 or 20 foot deeper than the area you're fishing or the area you're fishing, you need to straight switch to top water. You need to make big changes. And if none of those big changes are working, this is gonna be a funny one for you. Now just throw a bait you can move fast across the surface or the middle of the water column, a chuck and wine bait and cover as much water as you possibly can going around the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are going to run in to Dumbo eventually and you may catch a couple of them that are blind in one eye. So do all largemouth bass behave the same? No, they don't, but they are group thinkers if the conditions are the same. I'm Nick the Informative Fisherman, guys. We'll see you next time. Make sure to follow me on all the popular social media channels. Later.